Uh, I'm Flora Mani. I'm a, a system on chip uh, engineer at CNES, the French Space Agency. We'll talk about a, a project which is called VHDL Tool, a project I'm working uh, on uh, for um, a couple of years right now. Be careful if you search on the internet, there are two VHDL Tool uh, stuff. Sorry, people took the name after we took it. Be careful to go to the GitHub one. VHDL Tool is, um, is a collection of uh, software, we can see, uh, with one topic in mind, uh, which is improve uh, the way we are um, dealing with uh, the quality of the VHDL code. So we will uh, heard about lots about uh, VHDL today. And um, we, we wanted, uh, in the, um, usually in the space industry, we are using um, radiation hardened by design FPGA, which are uh, really, really smaller than uh, the um, commercial part you are uh, dealing with. And uh, since a couple of years, the FPGA are going bigger and bigger and for us, developing a good code with um, a good quality is very important uh, in order to uh, achieve uh, a good uh, component at the end without any bug and so on. So uh, we wanted to create some kind of uh, help for uh, mostly for the university and the smaller company. We cannot afford uh, buying expensive tools like linters and so on to uh, help them producing uh, a better code. And uh, we knew exactly what we wanted to do at first, but we didn't know uh, where we were going to arrive at the end. So instead of showing you all the software behind um, this uh, collection of tools, we will discuss about the journey we made uh, through uh, this, uh, this project. The first uh, step was, uh, well, now when we are dealing with uh, creating uh, FPGAs, uh, back then, the, um, a couple of years um, before, uh, the more important stuff was uh, coding styles, the rules you were applying when you were developing VHDL. Right now, most of the people are using Python or uh, high-level synthesis. The, um, uh, like we can say, the um, the addition of a company developing uh, FPGA is no longer in the quality of the code, if we can say, but it's mostly in the way of the process they are using internally and the review and so on. So what we did at first, it, uh, we took our stick and go to the French space companies and say, okay, we are um, a government organization, please give us all your coding styles, uh, your rules for developing VHDL, like you've got internally, and we sum up everything. We did some kind of lots of review with uh, different companies, and we gather everything inside, um, inside um, a collection of um, uh, rules, uh, what we are going to call a rule set, and everything was put together and uh, summarized into two kinds of subset. One is uh, we call the standard subset, which includes all the global rules, like you should have coding style for your VHDL to write signal and so on. And you've got another one, which is the CNES tailoring of the rule, which includes, I don't know if you want um, uh, active low signal, you just put underscore N at the end of your signal. So it's dependent of your company. And what we wanted at first uh, is, well, we gather everything inside a, a single document, which will be the beginning of and the starting point of, of all the tools we are building around. So we selected uh, XML, um, XML file to list all the rules in order to be able to uh, build the tools um, around this XML file and this data pack. And well, it was good for us, it's good for machine XML, but when we are dealing with VHDL developers, they don't want to read all the, um, the coding and so on on a XML file. So what we develop is some kind of uh, tool chain that is converting the XML file directly to a PDF file automatically. So 
what you can do if you is you can uh, take uh, the CNES uh, rule set, for example, adapt it to your own company uh, rule set internally, edit it, modify it, add rules, but you can get benefit of the toolchain behind it in order to create a PDF file which will be readable internally or you can give to, I don't know, uh, your supplier of BSGL IPs. So we, we started with that and then people were not very um, Happy with that, they say, okay, you've got a collection of rules, we've got hundreds of rules if you add the standard ones and the CNES one. And okay, uh, it's not really useful for us because you need something to check the rules. Otherwise, it, it, it's not feasible to have 100 rules in mind and be uh, sure that you will be uh, respecting all these rules. So what we did, we took our stick again and we say, okay, we have to look for a tool to uh, be able to help us to check the rules we brought earlier. And then we go on the we went on the internet and we say, okay, uh, we are looking for uh, a tool which is doing the analysis of the VHDL file, do some kind of um, uh, abstraction of the VHDL and giving us um, a tree organization of the VHDL and Based on this uh, feature, we can build some kind of rule checker analyzer, some kind of linter, if you prefer, be able to uh, check our rules. And when we did the research back then, we identified one um, uh, software which was already analyzing VHDL back then, which was called uh, Zamiakad, which is an open source um, uh, Eclipse plugin or Eclipse environment uh, depending on which version you are using, which is doing what you can see on the left side is the Zamiakad layers, which is doing all the analysis of the VHDL. And what we did is we built on top uh, this particular uh, layer, uh, we built some kind of um, uh, addition, which is supposed to check our rules. And to uh, do that, we were using the XML uh, rule set as input of the two tools. And uh, we, uh, you cannot see it, but right now we've got more than 26 out of 100 rules which are implemented in this tool. And uh, most of them are um, targeting uh, not, um, uh, not only the developer, but mostly the people we are going to review the code in, in case of peer review. Uh, because for us, the main concern uh, at the beginning is, was to detect some kind of uh, early bug in the um, way of coding VHDL. And uh, we saw that we didn't, we didn't have had any mo enough money to uh, develop some kind of uh, um, uh, when you are writing VHDL down, some kind of um, um, display automatically when you are uh, writing down your VHDL code. So we, we had this kind of um, uh, uh, plugin based on Eclipse, and then people were, as always, not very happy. They say, okay, you've got an Eclipse plugin. We are not uh, developing on Eclipse. We are developing, I don't know, Atom or VI or I don't know anything. I don't want to use Eclipse at all. And um, so we took our stick again and we, uh, we wanted to hide everything, the complexity of the project management uh, inside Eclipse, the organization and so on. And what we, we did, we, we did, okay, if people um, need to use this kind of um, uh, software, of tools chain, as we can see, um, they will have some to get uh, a nice graphical user interface. And then we looked around and uh, uh, found uh, the SonarCube software, which is uh, developed by SonarSource, which is uh, an open source uh, graphical user interface. Um, mostly uh, used by uh, software guys. This, um, this uh, software, in fact, uh, is made to, um, what we can say, have uh, introduced continuous 
code management and um, uh, checking inside um, uh, inside your project it means that uh, you no longer need to apply quality of code at the end of your product but this should be done when you are writing down your VHDL at the moment or when you are writing down your module. So each time you are doing some kind of modification or some kind of creation of VHDL code, then you uh, mostly will uh, uh, commit everything to a database or to a, um, a Git or SVN or whatever uh, software, uh, revision software. And uh, whenever you do that, there will be some kind of hook going to trigger uh, everything and doing the analysis of the, um, of the, um, of the project and uh, displaying everything. The main concern behind that is whenever you are uh, uh, pushing codes, this code will be checked against the rules and you no longer have to be compliant to all the rules, but instead of that, you have to be compliant to some kind of level of quality which is uh, described as uh, a technical depth and we use we develop some kind of plugin in sonarcube uh, sonarcube um, embed the plugin inside the server side and we are um, uh, hiding uh, the eclipse stuff and the rules verification inside the scanner side which is locally um, uh, deployed on every station when uh, people are, um, are developing VHDL. And what we developed uh, like um, two or three weeks ago, we had an additional plugins in order to display, uh, in, in addition to the rules, to display uh, the coverage of, um, of the, your VHDL test bench in order to improve the status of your code. And the coverage is directly uh, took from uh, uh, GHDL uh, coverage or to, uh, from model sim coverage. So you tell me, okay, the quality uh, code management is all right. Well, we, it's topic uh, dealing uh, for a long time. Uh, is it really interesting to do so? Uh, you are. Um, not very familiar with, maybe not very familiar with VHDL, but you've got the, the, um, the electronic, what we can say, representation of the VHDL code. It's uh, globally um, uh, a good VHDL stuff. It's, uh, it's working, as you can see. It's only three flip-flops, one behind the other, but there is a but. And this might lead to a problem. Which problem? In fact, if you do the simulation, you've got the, on the left side, you've got the normal stuff. Your flip-flop is moving from one side to another side. And on top, if you are doing the functional simulation, which is uh, totally uh, normal simulation, you've got a, a trouble with your flip-flop. There is no longer three stages. This is real screen captures, actually. So, okay, you, you, you identify a bug, but um, if you add this kind of feature by, uh, at, at first, what we implemented inside the rule set is that we put uh, a rule dealing with this kind of feature, which is a clock reassignment, in fact, and when you are dealing with clock reassignment, you are going to mix with the simulator, and uh, the simulator will no longer uh, found um, this, uh, these children and will display something strange like you see, yeah, like you saw on the previous slide. And um, if you add this kind of tool at first, well, you just have to scan the code and you will be reported uh, an error dealing with this kind of, uh, of feature, which is uh, basically uh, a way of identifying uh, in advance troubles that you can get in simulation or whatever. So for us, it's um, just the beginning of uh, the, um, the journey. Actually, we've got some kind of graphical user interface for our, for our tool in order to display uh, the quality of the code, which is uh, developed 
uh, at uh, the time of the development. And with that, we'll be able to uh, have a look on more uh, projects uh, and to identify more, um, more early in the design the troubles that might appear later on. And if you want to have the solution about, or the explanation about the trouble dealing with the flip-flops things and uh, the um, problem with clock refinement, you just have to come and we'll be discussing about, I can give you a clue, some kind of delta cycle and so on. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> you got. So if you look in the software world, you also had their external linters. Uh, yeah. If you now look at GCC, they try to incorporate all these things in their warnings and uh, these yeah. things. So my question is, are you considering to talk to Tristan, for example, to get your checks inside GHDL directly or so? Uh, we will. Uh, I didn't expect uh, Tristan to be here, but we, uh, we might discuss about that. In fact, this is uh, the release from uh, GHDL coverage is uh, two weeks from now. It was done two weeks uh, ago, so I didn't have much time to test it. And uh, we want it to be uh, open sources, so we want it to put GHDL, GHDL um, uh, within the, the tool chain. But what I discovered is also GHDL can do now interfaces with synthesis. And what might be interesting is there are several rules at the difference of the, from the software, when you compile, you've got um, uh, exact um, uh, what you describe in software will be exactly what you get when you execute the code, except if you've got, uh, I don't know, a bug in the tool chain. In VHDL, you ca you've got architecture troubles that you need a synthesis in order to uh, avoid uh, timing uh, issues and some other issues. And um, with that, some rules may be more efficiently checked in some kind of post-synthesis domain instead of uh, uh, BHDL uh, domain. I have like three, four questions, so oh. <laughs> step by step. The first one is, which BHDL standard versions do you support? Uh, in Zamiacad, it can up, go up to uh, 2002, I think, uh, but not all the 2002 standard. Okay. Um, the next one is you talk about a sonar cube or something yeah. like that. So I got the idea that everything you were talking about was like a kind of a service, an online service, and every time you push a commit, uh, everything is, is executed. Is it possible to have it? Installed locally, so when I'm writing in VH, um, Visual Studio Code, I can just run yeah. any of those tools yeah. directly. Yeah, in fact, uh, if you go to the website uh, on the bottom, or you flash the code, mm -hmm. you, you've got some kind of uh, zip. You can uh, uh, execute it on Linux or on Windows. In the zip, you've got a demo. You, the demo comes with two parts. One is the server with uh, SonarCube which uh, you will have to execute first. And then the other side is uh, what we call the scanner part that you can bring anywhere uh, you want uh, on your uh, network. And whenever you, 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 you are writing code um, inside uh, Visual Studio or so, so on, you just have to execute the scanner and everything will be pushed to the server. So you can do it manually or you, you can do it with a hook when you are uh, committing on your favorite and the last question, and this is quite a broader for all the community. Currently, I assume that you have some format to define what the project is and which files compose the project, which is the same as all of uh, FuseSoc, which is the same as VUnit, which is the same as GHDL needs to do for its language server. Can we as a community <laughs> find a single project format, uh, either based or in JSON or any other format, so we are not reinventing the wheel for its kind of this tool. It's an oh, open yeah. question. But we, we were, um, at first, for the format, we are tightly coupled uh, with the Zamiacad format for uh, managing the source file. On the other side, when you are dealing with uh, coverage 
or rule management, it's just uh, XML format. And if you have, uh, if you've got other tools to do the linting or analyzing of rules, if you comply with, we provide on the GitHub some kind of uh, schema to the format. You can put files in this uh, schema XML file, and everything will be incorporated inside uh, the display in Sonar Cube. I've got two questions for you. Um, the first is the fact that um, ah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm reasonably hardcore VHDL coder. I actually designed it to do stuff on a Macintosh. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty hardcore. <laughs> oh, that, that. Um, so the question I have got for you is a, a, a version of your tool available for the Macintosh. I noticed there's Windows and Linux. Uh, I didn't try about Macintosh. Uh, oh, well, there you go. So yes. Another challenge for you then. <laughs> <laughs> You'd, be, uh, you'd have a very happy customer feed. Yeah. The other question, which is somewhat silly and trivial, I noticed the fact that in your Q code you had various rockets. I recognized an Ariane 5, but I couldn't actually recognize the others. So if you could advise me this. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to put some kind of slide, but it, it's from one side to another side. Um, for the smallest one is Viga, is an Ita uh, Italian rocket. It's uh, dealing with uh, the smallest payload. This one is Soyuz, which is uh, made with a Russian and the, the last one is Ariane 5, and didn't, uh, yeah, Ariane 5, and the next one is Ariane 6. If I put it, one, two, three, four, yeah. Viga, so use Ariane 5, Ariane 6. Hi, you are saying at the beginning of your presentation, uh, that uh, most of the code now is uh, generated uh, by some tools. Yep. And I just wanted to know if you are also collaborating with people that are writing generators to integrate directly the rules that you have anal analyzed and integrate that directly in generators. No, we didn't uh, add um, uh, broad, we can say broad communication about the tools because it was quite hard to uh, deal with and uh, it's still on what we call bit, beta uh, and so on. There are lots of uh, false positive uh, showing up and it was very difficult to validate prior to get this graphical user interface when you've got the error of the tool displayed exactly on the location of the VHDL code. Otherwise you will have to, um, back then we will have to we had to uh, look inside the, VHD, um, the VHDL file and in parallel to the XML file and do the link manually. So now we've got uh, the um, graphical user interface. It's more easier for us to track the bugs and maybe improve it. But it, it will be, for us, it will be interesting to put in any tools and the rules are open. You can download them and have a look. You can modify and or ask for change if you're not happy with the comments, it's, uh, it's open, you can do that and you can reuse. We know some uh, university are using it for students in order to uh, learn, to teach them VHDL, they are using the rule set in order to give uh, good practice for VHDL coding. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks. <laughs>